I feel very honored to be asked, Dr. President Nido Gubin, faculty and staff and students, friends, parents, of an absolutely impressive renovated campus here. From the class of 1951 at West Point, it has been a marvelous journey to come here to High Point. It's a bit of a first for me to follow such a distinguished group of communicators who have been invited to this opportunity on this occasion. It's a long way for a fighter pilot from New Jersey. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, we had nothing before us. These lines from Dickens could well have been in this morning's paper. While living in the richest, most powerful nation on earth, people are losing their jobs and their homes. While lives lengthen and medical breakthroughs abound, health costs soar out of reach. While the curve of innovation and discovery approaches the vertical, stagnation threatens the very health of industry, science, and technology. While superstition and discrimination are in rapid decline in the developed world, we are terrorized by people who would be at home in the 12th century. And just when we've so refined our habitat that in the night glow of our species, as seen from space, nature, it seems, now sounds an alarm. In these paradoxic times, it is vital to hold fast to some redeeming vision of the future. Where there is no vision, says the prop, proverb of Solomon, the people perish. Such conflicted times are often the great watersheds in the history of civilization. Inflection points that face a fork in the road. The choice, the new vision will come not from my generation, but from yours from fresh perspectives and a pioneering spirit, not from ossified party lines. The great departures of history from single inventions to the rebirth of a whole people have come from those who are still innocent enough to believe in the perfectibility of man and bold enough to take the kinds of risk that revitalize the world. The particular vision that has defined my life, of course, is our future in space, which I believe may in the long run hold the greatest promise for humanity. Exploration, both individual and collective, is the heart and soul of the human journey. It's the ability to understand and reflect on our experience, to seek out where and what we are that sets our species apart from all others. But there are really three realms of exploration. Physical, exploring the ocean floor, and outer space, mental, the whole enterprise of science, and spiritual, 
the odyssey of your own life. So what I'd like to do in these few minutes is touch briefly on all three. The explosion of technology in the wake of spaceflight has affected every facet of our lives. Transportation, communications, medicine, agriculture, countless consumer products, and every form of manufacture. The economic returns have overwhelmingly exceeded the cost. Yet beyond all the political and economic rationales, our leap into space is a turning point in human evolution. The urge to explore has been the primary force in evolution since the first water creatures began to reconnoiter the land. Living systems reach out to their environment, merging with larger here? systems in the fight <laughs> against entropy. The evolutionary result is a self-organizing synthesis toward over more complex structures. And like all living systems, cultures cannot remain static. They evolve or decline. They explore or expire. It's curiosity, wonder, the need to see the whole from the mountaintop or the moon that is the hallmark of our species. In the end, our expansion into space promises a revitalization of humanity and a rebirth of hope no less profound than the great opening out of mind and spirit at the dawn of our modern age. In the same way that seafaring enlightened 16th century Europe, spacefaring will bring not only rich new veins of empirical knowledge, but will bind together nations, inspire youth, advance science, and ultimately end our confinement to one vulnerable world. The moon landings were achieved largely in response to the Cold War competition between two nations. Today it seems imperative that spacefaring become a multinational enterprise. The benefits of uniting the peoples of the world in a vision of future exploration could extend well beyond the cost savings, beyond even innovation and science. In this century, we'll have the technology to either self-destruct or seed the cosmos with life. The situation is so unstable that I wonder if we can dwell at this life-death fork in the road for more than a, another hundred years. The global vision of exploration would nudge the world toward life. In the 40 years since Neil and I set foot on the moon, a great deal has been said on the significance of that event. We became a space-faring species. We gained a new perspective on our home planet. And we showed what humanity can achieve with strong leadership and solid commitment. But while the moon landing has come to represent the impossible dream achieved through untiring dedication and determination, it also carries a larger message. That ubiquitous photo that Neil snapped of me on the surface of the moon has become a popular icon, not because of the moon itself was some kind of culmination, but because it suggests the open-ended future that awaits not only humanity poised on the 